What's going on guys? It's Coach Steven with 15 Points of Tennis. And the question today is, is it better to hit the ball with two hands or one hand? Again, two hands or one hand. And I'm not trying to get you to change your opinion on this. And worse yet, I'm not trying to get you to change a stroke because we all know how long it takes to build a new stroke from scratch. But rather today is about more opening up your mind and perhaps changing your approach okay to how you play with and against players who use one hand versus two-handed strokes because they have very inherent strengths and weaknesses that you as a player need to capitalize on so before we begin hit that subscribe button on the bottom if you have not yet already thanks for supporting the channel time stamps below as well we're gonna get started right now Now in terms of strike zone, one-handed strokes have a strike zone from about the shoulders to the knees, so pretty big, while two-handed strokes have a strike zone from about the thighs to the chest, which is much smaller obviously. And now many players oftentimes have, on an apples-to-apples -apples comparison, have a better two-handed backhand than even a one-handed forehand but still you see many players prefer to run around, hit inside ins and inside outs. And why is that? Because the strike zone is so much bigger. And that's what makes something like a shot as a, the, the backhand short ball so difficult because for a backhand short ball, it takes so much precise spacing to hit that shot well. As you can see, forehand, huge strike zone, taking the ball head level, no problem. Whereas a backhand, you really got to hustle up to the ball so it doesn't drop, hit it in your strike zone. Now when it comes to the difference between these strokes, the one-handed strokes put a little bit more emphasis on hand-eye coordination, just hitting the sweet spot. Because for a low ball or a high ball, I can just adjust my hand to the ball. Whereas two-handed strokes, if, if I don't catch the ball right here in this slot, I'm pretty much dead meat if I if I'm reaching for the ball up here. So two-handed strokes put a little bit more emphasis on your foot-eye coordination, not as much hand-eye coordination. Though as a great player, you need both. I would recommend, you know, if you're starting tennis, you choose a stroke that plays to your natural advantage as an athlete. So in a battle of strike zones, two hands will always lose to one hand. So if you're playing against a two-handed backhand, any two-handed stroke, you, your main strategy better be to get the ball outside the strike zone and look to set up the point. Same thing, just different scenario. I can hit the ball pretty darn well when it's in my strike zone and control the point. He's going to get the ball low, and two hands just can't do quite as much with a low ball as a one-handed. Oh. Next, let's talk about leverage, which is the distance I make contact from my center point or my axis of rotation. Okay, so the further away from my contact point is, the more leverage I have to hit the ball. And so one-handed strokes have a lot more leverage, and therefore with one-handed strokes, I can get a lot more speed in the tip on the very outside of the swing for a lot more power and spin. And we see that same example in golf, okay? In golf, a driver is a much longer club than that of a pitching wedge. So obviously a driver, you can hit the ball much harder and much further. And that is why for one-handed strokes, you have an advantage in terms of blowing the ball by your opponent and putting balls away. Unlike a two-hander, which is such a short swing radius, it's like little T-Rex arms, it's hard to generate that same pace. Now the two hands, they have an advantage in terms of reload speed. Okay, I can get turn, hit, turn, hit super fast. And unlike a one-hander, which might take a little bit more time to set up and swing, I can reach my max power level with a two hand very, very quickly. So in terms of style, normally two hands are a little bit better at using my opponent's pace and deflecting balls that come hard, while one-handers, again, much better for 
creating spin, angles, and put away balls, crushing it through the court. Here I'm up against a very good forehand. And just the nature of swinging, okay, with one hand and getting all that leverage, that racket speed, with very little energy, he can push me around the court pretty consistently. And it's hard for me to generate that same pace. I'm on the far side now and I can hit the ball pretty hard, but not hard enough to blow it through the court like my buddy here. So due to the properties of one-handed strokes, focus on early preparation to give yourself maximum time to set up and just dominate with that side. The advantage of two-handed strokes on the flip side is being able to load and unload very quickly, generate my max power level from inside the court with a quick turn. And he's going to hit these pretty deep up along the baseline. Even though the bottom screen is cut off, you can see how I step in early and deflect the pace no problem. Now with leverage comes a strength requirement. Okay, so the further I contact the ball from my body, the more leverage I have, but the more work it puts on my muscles to stabilize and hit. Okay, try this, okay? Ex extend your arms out here, and if I put a weight on the mid part of my arm, my elbow, okay, it's gonna feel a lot lighter than if I held that weight in my hand, which is at the end of my arm, which, which has much more leverage. Okay, so you can see the if you have a body type that's very long and lanky, okay, again, you have great leverage, very smooth, beautiful swings, but it just takes a lot more strength with that long, lanky body type. So unlike one-handed strokes, Two-handed strokes have a major advantage when it comes to stability. So, like for my two-handed backhand, when I turn, I can feel my core strength and I'm very connected to my core. It's like throwing a medicine ball, okay, every single time. Many one-handed forehands, more so at the lower level, okay, because players often don't have the strength as they hit. They often pull off their center, of their axis of rotation, to compensate to bring that racket around. So due to the lack of leverage, in a nutshell, hitting with two hands on both sides sort of makes you like a tank. Very stable, not a whole lot of mobility, but when the ball comes hard, no problem at all. So on the serve return, again, if the ball's in your slot, you can deal with it that much, I would say better than most one-handers who have to time the ball more perfectly. And with the increased stability, being able to aim your shots, not having to swing as hard, makes you sort of a deflection machine, if you will. Now, specific to the one-handed backhand, your backside muscles, like backside of the forearm, etc., are much weaker than your front side muscles, you know, hitting a traditional forehand. So, in theory, even though the, back, the one-handed backhand should have a big strike zone from here to here, because many players lack the necessary strength, that big strike zone shrinks tremendously. Okay, and a big reason why we don't see that many great one-handers at the junior level, nor do we see great one-handers as many on the WTA. And that's why, you know, for smaller players as well, I would consider, again, depending on how much strength you have, using a two-hander over a one-hander. Now, a lot of adults are stronger than the juniors, they can benefit from that extended range of motion, okay, instead of that stability. But it really comes down to that which trade-off you're going to make. And that same trade-off applies to the forehand side as well, okay. Hitting a two-handed forehand has a lot more stability, even though, and I'll talk about this more on a specific two-handed forehand video, even though most players probably have enough strength on their dominant side to get the benefits of a one-handed forehand without the downside. A one-handed backhand at a very high level gets a huge benefit from the big strike zone because the players are so strong. Think about dominant team crushing balls like head level from behind the baseline. But for the average player like myself or the student you're watching here, look, we can hit the balls well in our strike zone, but this high ball like you'll see here, we lose control because we lack the strength. Now, one-handed strokes have the potential to be far more elegant, 
due to a concept called flow, which is being able to keep the weight and the energy in the tip of the racket to keep your swing flowing and smooth. Now, that power, okay, when you can build it up, allows you to just meet the ball like a hot knife through butter. And that, that, that buildup of energy needs to culminate at one point, like right here, okay, at one single contact point. If you lose that feeling and weight in the tip, what's gonna cause your swing is to mu muscle the ball and, and jerk, okay, and, and, run, and pull the weight through, instead of feeling and keeping that energy on the outside of the circle here, nice and smooth. One-handed strokes are heavily reliant on flow. Okay, and if you disrupt the flow of a one-handed stroke, like especially one-handed backhand, you're not gonna hit it very well. And that's where the two-hander comes into play because with the two-handed stroke, if I lose my contact point and I start to jerk and I lose my flow, I can kind of just steer the ball in with a lot more ease. Now, in theory, one-handed strokes, if you can hit the, every single shot, whether it's spin, angles, better than that of a two-handed stroke, assume you time the ball perfectly every single time, but we all know how hard and difficult that is. So basically when it comes to flow, if you're feeling it that day and you have great rhythm, your max potential for how well you can play is going to be much higher, so if you're timing the ball well, you'll be rewarded handsomely. You'll also have some days where you kind of stink, okay, if you lose your rhythm with a one-handed strokes. But if you're a good player like my buddy across the net, he doesn't have very many stinkers. Alright, let's flip back over to the benefit of two hands. I can muscle the ball like this completely and still hit a pretty good shot because, again, the downside is completely mitigated for actually losing my flow. There's another one I completely muscled. So, I won't have as many great days but there are a lot of scenarios, even throughout a match, again, when I lose my flow or lose my rhythm, like on that last return, and you're going to see a return again where I'm off balance, but I just steer the ball in the court, and somehow it goes in. I can get through really bad patches of play because I had that room for error. Now, that last short ball I hit was in great rhythm, but you don't notice this huge discrepancy of when I lose my flow a little bit compared to that of a one-handed stroke. Now, if I'm you know, toe-to-toe -to -toe with a one-handed stroke about my skill level. If we're both in flow, he has more potential to hit good shots, more leverage. I'm normally going to lose that battle, right, if we're both playing great. So I do think it's personal preference. Do you like to have more of that cushion when you play day-to-day? -day, or do you like to have those amazing days where you're in the zone and you have the super high upside potential? When it comes to shot selection and variety, one-handed strokes have a far greater repertoire in terms of spins, angles, you can hit the ball harder, and you can have a lot more racket head speeds, just different permutations and combinations at all various heights. Okay, now with that increased potential, the drawback is of those different changes in mechanics. Sometimes players go astray and develop some quirky bad habits over time. I don't know if you've noticed, but think about how a lot of serves and forehands look very different from each other because there's a lot of variance in the technique. Compared to a lot of two-handed backhands, often look almost identical to very, very similar. Less can go wrong when you're hitting a two-handed stroke. So with one-handed strokes, look, just know your fundamentals and mechanics to T and you'll be good. But with the backhand side, like even though you have less variety and options, you can still execute something that's very simplistic at a very high level. So the difference between these two, okay, often comes down to players' personality type. Some players are extremely disciplined and they don't mind and actually enjoy replicating that same shot over and over and over again, all right? Some players, get kind of bored out there on the court, need to express your creativity through all types of variety and different shots. So just know that depending on what strokes you ended up choosing, 
Again, great players need both creativity and discipline, but it will affect your play style over time. The beautiful thing about tennis is it can be played and you can be successful in so many different ways. Personality-wise, I've always been a little bit more on the safe and conservative side, defensive side. So I can play in a way that's consistent, still high quality, but I more so wait for my opponent to lose all their balance. I don't force play, but I just take the game as it comes, but in more of a disciplined fashion. The student on the near side is less like me in the sense he likes to create more, force play more, come up with big plays, and really have a lot of trust and faith in his game and his shots. And that can also be reflected also part of the swing style that he chose. Same thing goes when I play against my friend here who enjoys playing tennis that's very creative and he gets bored when I make it stale and keep it very structured. So you can see when he is able to hit a variety of shots and keep me off balance, he does much, much better. To wrap this analysis, if you have the ample strength on your dominant side to hit a traditional forehand, then the benefits outweigh the drawbacks. At the highest level, okay, a two-handed backhand and a one-handed backhand are pretty even matches, but at a lower level, you see a lot less great one-handers. So I would recommend if you want to win a lot in the short term, probably go with a two-handed backhand. Now, it really comes down to, and the question I haven't posed yet is, what do you prefer? Okay, what do you enjoy playing tennis with? At the end of the day, only you can really decide what is right for you. So I'd like to get your comments on this. Any thoughts you have, leave them below. Your experiences of playing not only with different strokes, but against players with one hand versus two hands. In the next video, I'm going to talk about my two-handed backhand in specific and a follow-up to that, why I've chose to use a two-handed forehand even though I competed through juniors with a traditional forehand. All right, so thanks, and I'll see you guys on the next episode.